Okay. So for today, we're going to take a look at put, put click and close all the way. We're going to, it's mostly review. There's not a lot of new stuff, but it really is, is just reapplying some stuff we've already talked about earlier in the year. So we're going to, we're going to look at different forms of quadratic functions. Uh, two of these we already know. We're all already real familiar with. One of them is just a little bit different, but it's, it's, uh, it's not a big deal. It's one that we're, we're, we're used to seeing. We just, we just haven't, you know, we haven't really called it this yet. So we got three basic forms of quadratic functions, three ways that we write quadratic functions. You might wonder, why would we do that? Why would we write a function in more than one way? Well, sometimes it's useful to do that, right? So quadratic functions we could write in standard form or general form, which is where f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are the three parameters that, that define what kind of a parabola that is. We could write it in vertex form, which we're familiar with, right? We, did, we used this a lot when we were graphing quadratic functions. We were doing transformations of quadratic functions. Remind me real quick, what, are the, what does the h and k stand for? Okay, so it's the horizontal and vertical displacement, but another way to think about it is the coordinates of the vertex, or h and k, right? Because that's what starts at the origin. And so the vertex ends up being translated to its final location at h, k, right? So that, those are the coordinates of the vertex. And what's a? Uh, dilation. Vertical dilation factor. How much is being stretched or compressed vertically? If it's negative, it's being reflected vertically, right? So that one we're real familiar with. And then factored form, yeah, good. Uh, factored form is, we've never really called it this, but factored form is just what you get when you factor a quadratic expression, right? We did this way back in unit two, where we, we took a quadratic expression and we factored out the greatest common factor and then we found magic numbers, right? So you've seen this before. This isn't anything that's real new to you. So what our goal then is, is we want to be able to, knowing those three different forms of, of quadratic functions, we want to be able to convert from one to the other, right? So we want to be able to, for example, if we start off in vertex form or in factored form, we want to be able to change that to standard form, okay? That's the first thing we're going to do. This is really simple. All that amounts to, by the way, Whenever we're turning something into standard form, that's just simplified form. It's what you get when you follow PEMDAS and you simplify an expression. So for example, if we want to start off with something that's in factored form, right? We've got it broken up into a greatest common factor and then two, two factors, right? So that's x, q would be 2, and, or p would be 2, and q would be 5 numbers that are being subtracted from x, right? How do we turn that into standard form? We just multiply it out. We're just going to simplify. Piece of cake. You, you've done this for three years. You've done stuff like this. And this is, should be a piece of cake. So what would the steps be probably? We could do it in different order, but if you were going to multiply all that out and simplify, what would you probably multiply first? And I can see there's multiple answers here that are all correct. I, I would leave the 2 for the end because that's so easy to distribute, right? What I would do is I, I would go ahead and multiply that stuff out first, right? So if we're going to, that's just foiling. But you, algebra 1, you would have called it foiling. Now we probably call it distributing. So we'll just distribute the x first, and then we'll distribute the negative 2 second. So what do we get if we do that? What's that give us? If I distribute the x from the first expression to the second factor, what do we get? X, x squared. Now if we distribute the negative 2, negative 2x, and then finally, then all we have to do, I can combine like terms, right? I can combine, it looks like I can combine these two, right? Do you see why I have to have all these, why this whole thing in brackets, though? Does that make sense? Because I still haven't multiplied the 2 through, have I? Right? So whatever we end up with from, from this product, 
I've got to distribute the two all the way through the whole thing. So I need to have the whole thing in parentheses or brackets. I chose brackets. I don't know why. Whenever I have a real big expression, I always put it in brackets. But it doesn't matter. It could be parentheses. So we end up then with 2 times x squared minus 7x, if I combine those like terms, plus 10. And now I just have to distribute that 2, right? If I distribute the 2 all the way through, what am I going to get? 2x squared and then minus 14x. Okay, and there it is. Can we put it into standard form? ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? Piece of cake. No big deal. How about one like this guy? Maybe a tiny bit harder, but still not very hard. All I'm going to do is just follow PEMDAS. I'm going to simplify. So when I simplify, I just go top down. So what's the first step? Parentheses. So inside the parentheses, I have an x plus 5. Can I combine those? No, I can't. So that one, we're done with. OK, what about the exponent step? Well, there's my exponent, right? OK, now we got to think about this. So the exponent, what is being squared here? Everything inside the parentheses. Everything inside the parentheses. So it's an x plus 5, right? Now let's think about what that looks like. If I'm going to do x plus 5 squared, is that equal to x squared plus 5 squared? Uh, um, no, no, it's not. It's not equal to x squared plus 5 squared. No. I can't just distribute. When I square something, what's that really mean? If I have something squared, it means what am I doing? Like if I have pi squared, what's that mean? Pi times pi, right? So whatever's being squared, I'm just multiplying by itself. So what's being squared here is that whole quantity x plus 5, right? So really what this is, x plus 5 squared is x plus 5 times x plus 5, right? So I could do what I did in the last problem and just distribute the x and distribute the 5 and collect like terms. And that works. But you're going to do this for the rest of your math careers. You're going to do this a lot. You're going to square out binomials like that. And so I want to show you a pattern that's a lot easier to do. Because that takes too much time to write that out and multiply and distri you know, distribute through and collect like terms. Too many steps. So let's do this with a pattern. And let's just remember the pattern. It's a very simple pattern. So let's just start off. Instead of specifying x plus 5, let's just say a plus b, where a could be anything and b could be anything. right? If we're going to follow that pattern, so if I distribute the a, would you agree I'm going to get a squared? If I distribute the a there, I'm going to get a times b. If I distribute the b, I get b times a. Well, that's the same thing as a times b, right? Plus b times b is b squared. So look what we get for that pattern then. If I combine like terms, what's AB plus AB? No. If I have one apple plus another apple, what do I have? Two apples, right? So if I'm, I'm when I'm adding up like terms, if I have two of them, I'm just going to put two out in front. Right? AB plus AB is just 2AB plus B squared. So there's our pattern we can always follow. Look at that. If I have a plus b quantity squared, it always ends up being a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. In other words, it's going to be the first thing squared plus 2 times the first times the second, right? 2 times the product of the two plus the second thing squared. You can always follow that pattern. It's way easier to do than have to multiply this whole thing out every time, right? So let's go up here. Then when we're doing this exponent, what is the x plus 5 squared, what's that going to end up being? In this case, my a is an x, and my b is a positive 5, right? Okay. So the pattern is a plus b squared is a squared. So isn't that x squared? Right? Plus 2 times a times b is 2 times x times 5. What's that? 2 times x times 5 is 2 times x times 5. If I multiply all that stuff together, what do I get? 10x. There you go. Plus 10x plus 5 squared is 25. Right? Where do you get that? 
Okay, but that's just, that's what the x plus 5 squared was. So, is what I wrote there correct? No, it's not. What did I need to do? Well, I do. I, I, haven't, I haven't gotten to that step yet. But for step one, when I, when I expand the exponent out, the x plus 5 quantity squared. Oh, okay, good. I need parentheses, don't I? Very good. Right, because the negative is being multiplied by that whole thing, by whatever we get from x plus 5 quantity squared. The negative is times the whole darn thing, so I need to have parentheses there. Okay? So there's the first step. The exponent step. Next, multiply, divide. What's that mean? What am I multiplying? Yeah. I'm multiplying the negative 1 times the whole thing. So I'm going to distribute the negative all the way through. Right? So I'm going to get negative x squared minus 10x minus 25 minus 1. And then finally, last step. That's a track. Yeah, combine like terms, add the like terms. So negative 25 and negative 1 is negative 26. So my final answer, negative x squared minus 10x minus 26. I put it into standard form or general form, right? Make sense? Okay, easy. So those are easy conversions to make. When I'm going from vertex form or factored form, anytime I turn something into standard form or general form, whatever you want to call it, that's always just order of operations simplified. No big deal. Okay, now let's look at the other, other things we could maybe do. We might want to start in standard form and turn it into factored form. Okay, you've done that. That's just factoring. Let's look at an example. So write this in fully factored form. You've done stuff. This is a problem. This is actually an exact problem I put from unit two. So you've done this exact problem before. Let's go through the steps. Oops. What did we always do first when we were factoring a quadratic expression? We could, we're we're going to eventually find magic numbers, but before we can do any of that stuff, I, there's an important step i got to do there first. Say it again. Get the, okay, so we're going to try to undistribute right, a greatest common factor, factor out a greatest common factor. What could we undistribute from all those terms? How about a, a, a negative 2? How about, remember, when we, when we find a greatest common factor, it's always going to have the sign of the leading term. So if this is a negative number in front of x squared, then we're going to factor out something negative. Does everybody agree that, that 2 divides into all those numbers? Yeah. And because a is negative, we're going we're to undistribute it, the negative number. So we end up getting, for step 1, if we take a negative 2 out front, and that's our... GCF, what's left behind? X squared, because negative 2x squared divided by negative 2 is just x squared, minus 5x, right? Because neg because 10x divided by negative 2 is negative 5x, right? Would you agree? Okay. And how about here? negative 36. 72 divided by negative 2 is negative 36. Another way to think about it would be negative 2 times what is negative 2x squared? Well, x squared. Negative 2 times what is positive 10x? Negative 5x. Negative 2 times what is positive 72? Negative 36. So there's step one. We're going to factor out the GCF. Then what do we do? What do we do then? Because our goal is to factor this, right? We want to write this. Remember what factored form looked like? Right? It looked like this, where we've got a times x minus some number times x minus some number. So we're trying to break it apart into a product of factors. So it's been a while since we did this stuff, but we did a lot of this stuff, didn't we? Yeah. I want to make it look like that. Well, what was our trick? If a was equal to 1, because we're just breaking down the part in the brackets, right? The negative 2 is out front of everything. 
But if A is equal to 1, then if it factors, remember those were both x's. Because when I distribute, x times x gives me x squared. What about the number part? What did the, we call the magic numbers. What did the magic numbers have to do? Add to, add, add to negative 5 and multiply to negative 36. Okay, so we got to find magic numbers that multiply to negative 36 and add to negative 5. So if they're going to multiply to a negative, what would the signs of the two numbers need to be? One positive, one negative. Good. And if they add to a negative, which one would be the bigger one? The negative would be the bigger one. Good. So we know it's got to look like that. And then what numbers would work? Four and four. Ah, now I heard it. Nine and four. Right. Negative nine and positive four. Negative nine times four multiplies to negative 36. Negative nine plus four adds to negative five. Good. Done. That's it. Okay. So that's another thing. It's a skill that we did a lot of work with earlier in the year. You might have to do a little practicing. You know, it's been a while, but it'll come right back to you. It's like riding a bike. So we know how to go from almost everything we need. There's only one last one to do, and that's actually another one that we've done before. What if we want to start in, in uh, standard form and turn it into vertex form? Okay. Now, notice in vertex form, Look at this quantity right here. I've got an x minus h quantity squared. That looks like a perfect square, right? We've got, we've got something x minus something squared. That's a, that's a perfect square. How did we create perfect squares in unit two? What was that process called? Remember? We do. We, we, created, we, we created stuff that looked like this. Here's a problem. We want to convert this quadratic function into that form. Wasn't that, remember we did something called completing the square? Where we took, we, we added just the right number to both sides so we could create a perfect square trinomial that back. Remember that stuff vaguely? It's been a while, but it'll come back. Okay, so when we did that, when we completed the square, remember what our, what we ended up having to do. When we completed the square, on the side where we were completing the square, remember our starting line? Our starting point for completing the square, we always had to get x squared plus, we called it bx space equals a number. Remember that? Okay. We're going to do the same kind of thing here. I'm not going to call it b anymore because now b is going to end up meaning something different. But we have to get something like that on the side where we're completing the square. We have to get x squared plus some number times x is our starting line for completing the square. Okay. So let's think about this. If we're starting off with the function, here's the steps you can go through on this. Now, I've already got notes up for this uh, on Moodle. So you can write them down in your notebooks if you want it, but I've, I've already put them up on Moodle under the class notes. So f of x equals negative 4x squared plus 40x minus 156. Step one might seem really stupid, but I think it really helps. Let's rewrite the f of x as a y just because it looks too complicated if you don't. So the very first thing you do is just replace that with a y. Okay. okay, now tell me, if we want to put this thing into on the right side of the equation, which is where all the x's are, we have to end up getting x squared plus some number times x, and that's it. What are the two things I've got to do to the right side to put it into that form, to get it to the starting line? On the right side. It needs to look like, it's got to look like this, x squared plus some number times x. What's wrong with the picture on the right side right now? What's one problem? I have, okay, I have a negative 4 there in front of the x squared. I've got to get rid of that, right? What's the other thing that's, that's there that's a problem? The negative 156. I got to get rid of that, right? So, which well, we probably want to. We're going to want to add the 156 first. We're going to get rid of this guy first, and then we'll just divide both sides by negative four to get rid of the negative four out front. That makes sense. So we got two steps that we, in order to put this to the point where we can complete the square. 
we'll add 156. So those guys cancel, right? So then we've got y plus 156 equals negative 4x squared plus 40x. Now we'll just divide each side through by negative 4. Now the left side, don't panic. The left side looks pretty ugly. That's all right. doesn't matter. You'll see why here in a little bit. What we're really trying to do is get the right side to look like it needs to. Okay, so if I do this. What do I end up with on this side? When I divide this whole thing by negative 4, I'm just dividing each term by negative 4. So what do I get from the first term? What's negative 4x squared divided by negative 4? x squared, okay. Good. Uh, what's 40x divided by negative 4? Good. We got it like we needed it to, right? So now we're, we're to the starting line. So now we're going to do what we did back in unit 2 when we complete the square. What's the number that I'm going to add to both sides to create a perfect square trinomial? Remember this? We used to call this a B, right? And we said it had to be half of B squared, right? So in this case, B is negative 10. What's half of negative 10? Negative 5 squared is positive 25. Right, that comes from my negative b squared, or from my negative 5 squared. Now it's an equation, so I've got to add the 25 to both sides though, right? So what does the right side become then? The whole point of doing this was to turn it into a perfect square. So what is the right side if we write that perfect square trinomial, if we factor it? What are the magic numbers that multiply to 25 and add to negative 10? What are they going to be? What two numbers multiply to positive 25 and add to negative 10? Negative 5 and negative 5, right? So we're getting x minus 5 squared on the right side equals all that stuff on the left side. Okay, so now all we got to do is get the y by itself, right? We did the part where we ended up getting the h minus, or the k, the x minus h squared part. That was the hard part. Now we just have to get that y back by itself. So we're just going to undo each of the steps we did. So what's the last thing we did? Well, we added 25 to both sides. So what am I going to do next? Subtract 25 from both sides. So step one, right? You just get that. Okay. Now what? Multiply both sides by negative 4. Good. So if we multiply each side by negative 4, that's going to cancel the dividing by negative 4. And over here, if I multiply each side, if I multiply the whole thing, that means I've got to distribute it to both parts, right? I'm multiplying a, uh, two different terms. So i got to do that. Okay, what's that give me then? Over here, I've just got a y plus 156. Negative 4 times the quantity x minus 5 squared is just negative 4 times the quantity x minus 5 squared. I'm just going to leave it like that. Negative 4 times negative 25 is what? Jay, go ahead and put that away. What, say it again? 100. Okay, last step. Subtract 156 and I'm done. All right. So what's my final answer then? I get y, which is the same thing as f of x, equals negative 4 times x minus 5 squared. And then 100 minus 156 is what? Okay, and there's my answer. Okay.
It looks like a lot of stuff, but it's all stuff that we've essentially done in the past. Just dredging it up to use it in a different way, right? All we had to do was make the right side look like x squared plus bx, right? And then the left side is going to be kind of a mess when we do that, right? But once we get the right side to look like x squared plus bx, we just complete the square. We add the right number to both sides to be able to complete the square. And then we just undo all the steps that we did to get the y by itself. Okay? Make sense? Okay. I'm going to let you work on this stuff. I think that's the best thing to do is jump in and, and try some of these problems. So log in. This is section 4.3. So try the 4.3 assignment. It doesn't have a lot of problems on it. I, I, I assigned very few. So if you need extra practice, maybe one problem like I only gave you one or two problems at each time. So if that's not enough, just reload the problem and get a little more practice. I didn't want to load you down with a bunch of homework. Maybe some of them you're going to get it right away. But if you need a little more practice, get it. 